Okay, real quick, real quick. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. We have a sentence that has just been handed down. Uh, the podcaster known as Tax Stone has gotten 35 years in prison. Okay? He's gotten 35 years in prison. Um, this is for the shooting of Troy Ave. This is for killing Troy Ave's bodyguard. A lot of people expected him to get around the 20-something range. This is a huge deviation from what has been put down. Now, let me let me, let me, let me speak a little bit on, on this. This was something that we should have always expected to be handed down with force. I'm going to tell you why. Y'all brought in a gun into a nightclub in New York City in a place where guns ain't even allowed. You're not even allowed a gun in the city. Within city limits, you ain't allowed with a gun, period, unless you're a law enforcement officer. Trust me, I know. Because when I travel and I fly and I got to check my guns in, I don't even go to the, the, the airport that's in New York City because they ask you so much question, they want to lock you up just for traveling through it with your guns carried the right way. Much less toting a gun walking around the street. Much less going into an establishment. And most 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 um cities have this provision. Even if you have a carry permit, you cannot bring a gun in venues that serve alcohol. So New York City don't allow guns. Period. They also have these places that serve alcohol that are concert venues. I always thought this case they were going to come down unnecessarily hard because of where it is. Everybody was saying, well, tax been locked up for four years, five years. He's going to get 20 years. So you take the four off the 20. It's like 16. But then he only got to do about half of that. He'd be back in eight years. Clearly not the case. This 35 years is uh, yeah, you can't bring a gun in casino no matter what carry permit you got. You can't bring a gun to, to a school casinos anywhere alcohol is served um you can't you also can't bring it to a church i i almost no nah, i actually let me, let me stop with the church but there are certain places but but it differs it differs for what jurisdiction regardless i only say that to say not only aren't you not allowed a gun in new york city you ain't allowed one normally in a nightclub nor a, a performance venue and because there's so many people there and they serve alcohol the judge is not gonna have mercy on you OK, um, I'm going to see if I can find out a little bit more details about this. Uh, you know, I've seen some people. I don't know if you guys were like shocked that I referred to Tax Stone as a podcast and legend. He absolutely is like he created a whole lane. He brought a whole different audience and he established something that wasn't there before. He didn't establish podcasting, but he established a type and 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 a different audience that cared about podcasting. Gillian Wallow benefit from that, and you have to show respect to Tax Stone for that. That alone makes him a legend. Okay? Um, let's read a little bit more about it. The rapper Tax Stone, Daryl Campbell, was on trial. Okay? Da, 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 whatever, whatever. After the guilty verdict on June 10th. Um, wait, the guilty verdict wasn't on June 10th. Oh, on June 10th. Okay, on June 10th, inner city press went back to sentenced to 35 years incarceration. First, three family members spoke. The mother showed his photo. His sister described him saving a woman on the Brooklyn Bridge. The prosecutor quoted Campbell about getting a Connecticut lobster roll at Red Hook Lobster after the shooting. Said his anti-gang podcast talk was too little too late. She noted on the ongoing federal case, blah, blah, blah. Judge said the consecutive sentence. Oh, she gave him consecutive. That's why. Because a lot, because the, the max charge for this manslaughter was supposed to be like 20 something. That's what I'm like. How do you get 35? They gave him consecutive. Wow. Here we go. In New York State Court, uh, where Daryl Campbell, uh, a.k.a. Taxstone, was just sentenced to 35 years of upstate incarceration. This was for the murder, oh, manslaughter, the death of Ronald McFadder, three of whose family members spoke at the sentencing, and also the injuring of Troy Avenue, 
Troy Ave and two others. Uh, at the end, after the legal arguments were done, after it was determined that there would be consecutive sentences, after Judge Klott said that he wanted them to be consecutive to show that four victims additional time upstate, um, Daryl Campbell spoke and he said it was all Troy Ave's fault, that Troy Ave attacks anyone that attacks his music, that he's a jokester, that he only took a gun to, into the club in Irving Plaza to, to protect himself, that he always has felt that, that he would be attacked, therefore he had to have a gun. Um, there were people sitting on both sides of the audience. There were supporters of Tax Stone on one side and there were the supporters of, mostly of Mr. McFadder on the other side. Um, I was in the middle, uh, and I have to say, 35 years is a long period of time. We're going to continue to follow it. There was reference made to the federal case, which is uh, pending before Judge Schofield. It's a felon in possession case. He did plead to that, and the prosecution said he only pled to that because of the potential larger uh, uh, exposure uh, in federal court for not pleading out. We're going to follow that as well. Will that be on top of the 35 years? In any event, here we are. Uh, InnerCityPress.com, you'll find it online. We continue. God damn. Our Matthew Russell Lee at New York State Court. This is going to be a short one. Uh, Daryl Campbell, a.k.a. Tax Stone, was just sentenced to 35 years in prison for uh, the, the, the death. It was called manslaughter at trial. The death of Ronald McFadder, uh, the injuring of Troy Ave and of two others. Uh, he blamed it, Daryl Campbell did, all on Troy Adams for attacking those who criticized his music. He said that he only took a gun because he felt under threat. Three victim, three family members of Mr. Fatter spoke, and the judge imposed, Judge Clot imposed 35 years. A longer report to follow, innercitypress.com. Oh, Here we are, Matthew Russell. Wow. Wow. That, that is, I know New York Daily News is going to put up put it up pretty soon, but they be hating them niggas be like, oh, tearing your ad blocker off. No, nigga. See? Fuck out of here. God damn! 35 years! <sighs> Lesson learned. Let's talk about lessons learned from this situation. Lessons learned from this situation. Um, Tax Stone should not have been at that venue if he had any idea that Troy Ave was going to be there. Should not be there. Troy Ave also with his ego initiated possibly an altercation that at the end of the day still got somebody killed. That doesn't make one less innocent than the other. The argument that, oh, well, Troy Ash set it off, so you got to blame him. That's not how it worked in the legal system. You wasn't supposed to have a gun in that venue. I believe the harsh sentence is because it's New York City. There's going to be several lawsuits to be to follow. By the way, Troy Ave is suing Live Nation. Live Nation, they were running the event. A gun got brought in the venue. Apparently, tr tr uh, Tax Tone was going from left to right, trying to figure out a way how to get in the venue without being searched. So he deliberately carried that gun. Banger is dead. Troy Ave also, even though he cooperated, he will be serving some time. And for all intents and purposes, Tackstone's life is over. Just like that. Very horrible case. That this tax stone case has has taught me one thing, and I knew from the jump. I rather uh, a lot of times when niggas say, "Oh, you not outside," niggas want to see you crash. 
You ever heard any of these motherfuckers saying, yo, act, you not outside? No, you don't see me with the rappers. I go outside. But if I'm critical of motherfuckers or I'm over here, like, for example, I'll give you a quick example. I'll give you a quick example. Dirk, me and Dirk, we've been texting. We cool the center, right? Dirk came to Jersey to perform two days ago. Dirk was performing in Atlantic City. On the bill is Metro Boomin. Now, really, I don't really got no problem with Metro Boomin, but clearly he don't like me. I know if I say, oh, Dirk, give me some tickets, I know I'm be backstage being in the mix, whatever, whatever. But here's the thing. I'm a fan at that point. I'm showing up to your concert. Metro Boomin's on the lineup. He is a performer that's going to be on the lineup. I say, why even put myself or even him in that situation? Now, granted, maybe it's, it's, it's I think there's a great likelihood nothing happens. But why even do that? Why even do that? You get what I mean? So I say, you know what? Nah, I'm going to catch Dirk on one of like his solo performances. Because that's how that Tatch Stone Troy Ave thing happened. Troy Ave's going to, he's invited by T.I. to perform. You're a blogger hanging out in the back with the cool guys. Well, eventually, you know it's going to come to a head. Yo, y'all seen each other? Y'all been talking shit about each other and nothing happened? These are the decisions you got to make. This is the reason why I per personally pride myself on not hanging out with rap niggas. And that might be used against me because people, people look at it like, well, maybe you're just not cool enough. Nah, I get invited to everything. I just make that decision not to go. Because when you go, you got to be aware of, and, 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 and I'm not sitting here as woe is me. I'm sitting here as people like me, Charlemagne, Taxstone, anybody who talks and actually has an opinion, or you could call it talking shit, you got to be aware of this. There's some niggas that won't, like, put it like this. If they said Freddie Gibbs and I don't know whoever was doing some shit, and I, I wouldn't just show up there unless I'm planning to fight it out with them. It's just not going to happen. You know what I mean? You can't just go to places thinking, it's just, so again, you have to make sure you're moving accordingly, especially these are the risks you take, but th these are also um, the precautions you have to take as well. Now, I say that to say this. I know tax was a little bit newer in comparison to in, 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 like a lot of shit with the industry, but tax knew what he was doing. The moment Tax said, I needed a gun to go in there, Tax knew what it was doing. That decision, along with another man's ego, who probably said, yo, those three of us is one of him. Let's." It now led to one person dying, Tax getting 35 years. Uh, again, I rather they say I, I ain't outside because you don't see me. In, and by the way, you do see me with like rappers at the time, but shit, I make sure I pick my spots, nigga. I'm not everywhere with everybody. Because again, when you run into some of these people, like like for example, let me give an example. Okay, when me and Meek wasn't seen eye to eye, there'll be events I'd be invited to that Meek I know was going to be there and here's the thing is one thing if you're showing up as a guest. So like, oh, he might just show up as a guest. If Meek is scheduled to perform, my nigga, like at that point, like, what what are you doing? Like, I'm not a rapper. I'm not getting on stage to rap. You're a, a, a visitor. So at that point, like, nigga, you got to move around a little bit, my nigga. Especially if you're going to where the nigga's about to work. That's why I use the Metro Boomer shit. Like, nigga, I don't think Metro on shit. But. You're going to where that nigga finna work at. And that's why I think, you know, some people contextualize this like, oh, no, Troy Ave was sending. Troy Ave was doing a lot of fuck shit back then. That's a fact. He was getting people to beat up journalists. He was getting people to, to drag McConan off stage. That's a fact. But that doesn't mean you go to where he's 
invited to come perform, which is work, and you got a gun on you, and there's a confrontation. So again, um, that's as much. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the whole shit. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest though. When tax was out here, and and and, and I gotta say this because I don't want to be a hypocrite. Niggas like me was looking at tax like, yeah, tax, because tax was like the gangster blogger. <laughs> like, yeah, tax, show these niggas they pussy. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I love when I remember when he got he got into it with Meek and he was like, nigga, yo, my show's in Philly, nigga. I'm going to Philly. I'm like, yeah, tax, go tax. But such is the case with the whole internet. The things that a lot of people loved about tax, look where it's ended with him being at. And you know what all them niggas are gonna say? Oh yeah, we still listen to his podcast. Okay. Um, I'm going to send my prayers for Tax Stone. I'm going to send my prayers for Troy Ave. I'm going to send my prayer for Banga and the other two victims. The person who got shot in the back. Also, the woman who got shot in the face. Okay? Prayers for anybody else who was there who were affected and got PTSD because bullets is flying by your head for this crazy situation that happened. And, um, you know, um, as we go forward in the future, you know, listen. We hope that these things don't repeat themselves. Okay? Let's leave it at that. All right. Let's get back. There are over a thousand. Oh, my God. All right. So there's another mute. So let me just back up a bit. 